Alright guys, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to get started by going over what you should have on your tabletop today. Okay. Okay, on the side counter, we have, some of you guys needed an extra copy. You have not turned it in. So I copied the back end of your packet for your welcome back packet for this year. It's all of your parent permission, the slips, uh, emergency contact, an agreement that you agree with what is in that packet. You and your parents need to sign or guardian. I also added on this page, <clears throat> your supply list that you got back in May when we went over this in class. Um, the items that we for sure, for sure will be needing soon, like Thursday, um, these should already be in your kit, but if they're not, get them here by Thursday. I know I sent you a remind Saturday, Sunday, I can't remember what it was, uh, but I sent you a remind about it this weekend. Um, you need to make sure that you have your regular white and black nail polish, which is regular polish, and then you need your black and white UV gel polish. Now when you go to the dollar store and you see a polish that says gel polish, make sure it's the correct one because not all the ones that say gel polish are true gel polish. A gel or UV, a UV gel or, or polish is here with a UV or LED light. Okay, it does not dry without going in the light. Okay, so you need to make sure to have those things. Okay, all right. For Thursday, we start this Thursday, you need your light to have battery. I also sent you a message about that. I deleted last year's Remind, so now I only have this year's Remind. So if you're not signed up for that one, you need to get signed up. Okay, so with your light, you might have a green or a pink one or a blue one, but you can push this down, okay? And you're gonna twist the top, you're gonna twist the top off, and this comes out. This is the casing for the batteries. It's three, I believe it's AAA, okay? If it doesn't work, your batteries are probably the wrong direction. Okay, so this needs to be loaded and ready to go by Thursday. Okay, don't take the, the batteries from the remote at home, but if you do, make sure that you take them back home that same day so your family doesn't get mad, okay? This needs to have batteries in it. Your nail drill, we won't be using till later, but if you want to go ahead and put batteries in it, you can, or just bring them, okay? I did send you a reminder about that. Okay, you will also be needing your clear coat of gel and your black gel for a liner we're going to start transfers on thursday okay so today we're doing color wheel and learning how to polish transfers on thursday and friday um transfers you have three transfers you picked up from the back counter you have these transfers that are char character transfers okay learning how to do faces you also have the stencils, these are the transfers. We're gonna create the design on the paper and then we're going to move it to the nail. And then you have your Halloween transfers, okay? Now, I know it's early for Halloween, I get it, but a nail technician or nail artist will always start preparing two months, at least two months ahead of the holiday schedule. So, Halloween, is a money maker for nail techs because everybody wants a cute ghost and spider web and they want all the things, right? So, not everybody, but a lot of people. So that's a big money making month for you as a nail artist, okay? But you need to start two months ahead in pre preparation for that, okay? So, in, sep in August, you start looking at designs, you start practicing, you start making your, um, making all of your different nail palettes, making your samples. So that way, doing it all, all this stuff, so that way, whenever September comes, you can start promoting yourself, not too crazy much, but start throwing out there some designs on social media, start marketing your designs, start telling people about it, finish making and perfecting your your 
samples. And then in October, people will get their nails done like towards the end of the last week of September, some beginning of October. Then they'll start calling you, hey, I saw, can, I saw your nails, I like these. Hey, do you have an appointment? Hey, can I book? Hey, will you do my nails? That will happen end of September, beginning of October, hopefully through the month of October. But if you start planning in October, girl, you are far behind. The person, the clients have already seen somebody else's work. They have already booked with somebody else. You, you are not getting any of that money. Which at the end of the day, that is your goal. To get paid for what art you put out, right? So, make sure, make sure that when you, if nails is something you want to do, two months before that season, you begin. So Thanksgiving, which is not as popular, but you know, kind of more fall neutral colors. Thanksgiving, you begin in September, and then Christmas designs you begin in October. Okay. So like right now, you go and there's Halloween stuff, there's Christmas stuff at Hobby Lobby. Why so early? You start planning. You don't just start decorating your house in December first. You do it the month before. You buy the things the month before that. Okay. Questions? Fabulous. These need to go in sheet protectors. Okay. So, you have sheet protectors in your binder from last year. Go ahead and take these, put them in sheet protectors, put them in your folder. Put them in your binder is fine, whichever folder works perfect. We will be working with these on Thursday. You will need your black and your clear and your white polishes, okay? Thursday. You also need one of these yellow papers as we are going to be taking notes today. <clears throat> On your tabletop, you need your nail mats. You need your red, yellow, and blue paints. You need your color wheel palette. You need a Sharpie. You need a marker of sorts because we're going to take notes on your yellow paper. You're going to need the brush that you learned how to crimp yesterday, the short yellow bristles. You're going to need your pipette labeled alcohol. You need your alcohol pump bottle. You need one to two napkins. Damping dish. You're not going to use this today, but it's a set up for tomorrow. You're going to need your color, your uh, your palette, and then you need your color wheel sheet, your color sheet, and your sheet protector. I'm going to give you just a second to get those things together in order and organize yourself. Let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> the goal for today is for you to learn two things. One, how to professionally polish nails. In other words, why should she come pay you to polish her nails when she can do it at home? What's the difference? And two is to learn the color wheel, how to blend your colors together. Okay. It's a two-day thing. Work two-day workshop is today and tomorrow. <clears throat> We're going to start with some notes. So if you'll take your yellow paper and your mar marker, writing utensil. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so we're going to take some notes. This is how to nail polish. We're going to learn how to nail polish using the three stroke technique. Three is the magic number in cosmetology. 
okay? You'll hear that number several times. You heard it lots of times last year when we did aesthetics, okay? All right, we're gonna draw a nail as if the, we're holding the client's hand, okay? So here we have our nail. We're gonna give it a scoreable design. And then here's our cuticle. And here is our finger, okay? We're looking at the nail as if we're holding the client's hand. The three stroke technique is simple. You stroke the nail three times with the brush and you're done. Now, the way to polish is as follows. Here are your layers. Okay. Your first layer is going to be base coat. Your base coat is a protective layer or a barrier. So that way the colored polish does not damage your natural nail. Back in the day, polishes were made with different ingredients and over time it would stain your nails yellow should you have left it on for a while. They don't now, they don't make them that way now with all the bad ingredients, but they put that base coat to protect your nail. The base coat also allows that coat of polish to adhere well to your natural nail, okay? That's the base coat. If you have ridges or bumps or something on your natural nail, that base coat helps fill in those those dips, those divots, those gaps, so that the top, the, the following top layers are smooth. So the base coat's important, okay? Then, you have a coat of color. First coat of color. And then you have a second coat of color. Always, unless if you buy the really expensive nail polish that's really good, that it's made really well, that needs only one coat because it's very concentrated in pigment, but typically you need two coats of color. Now, you need to make sure that the first layer dries before you put the second layer before the third because if not, the top layer is going to dry but it's mushy on the inside. Then the client goes to grab her keys and messes up her nails. Oh, you got to go fix it and they don't want to pay for it and you don't have time, okay? Got to let each layer dry. So, the first coat of color, a lot of people always make the mistake of they, they'll paint the nail and they want to see, they want to see this red. Like, they want to see this color on the nail. They want an immediate application of color. It is not an immediate deposit of color, it's not. The first layer should be thin, it should be transparent, Parent, it should be a little bit of product. Okay? You should still be able to see the natural nail through the first layer. Your second coat of color, your second coat of polish, should be your final. Then that's when you'll start seeing this color. Okay? The first one is like your primer. After your color, then you're going to have your top coat. The base coat and the top coat, those are both clear. Your top coat, is there someone at the door? I thought I heard something, I'm sorry. The top coat, the top coat, thank you love. The top coat is going to be the, the protective layer. One, it's gonna give shine. Two, it's gonna smooth the polish over. Three, it's gonna help seal anything that's underneath and the top coat can be shimmer can be shiny can be matte all of the things okay but those are the four layers okay okay questions on that when you go take your test senior year during state board this way okay this 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 these layers 
Luckily, you just do it on one finger because you get really nervous the rip. Okay. Now, let's look at how we apply. You have your brush. Remember last year we talked about face painting and brushes and strokes and all of that? Okay. I know Rebecca's, y'all are in class doing this right now. You put the brush down, the brush is this white. You push the brush down on the paper and it does this, it fans out. So you have a wider wingspan. Okay. With the three stroke technique, that is just that. You take the brush, you put it in the middle, you push it down, the wings open and you strike down. Then you either go to the right or the left, it doesn't matter. Go to the one side and strike down, opposite side strike down and you're done. That's it. No mas. At home, people go do 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 one you're wasting time. Okay? Two, that grandma does that. Why do you a professional do that? Why is she gonna pay you money for something that she can do at home herself? So let's put it this way. Let's pretend all of you guys are graduating now and you have all your nail stuff together and you're going to go apply to nail salon. You're in competition with each other to get that position at that job, okay? And really, you're in competition with everyone else in the world trying to get a position with that job. Why should they pick you? What makes Evelyn different and better than anybody else in that applies for that position? Why should I, the manager, choose her? Because they're all great. But what makes her different? So you gotta think of it that way with your clients. I'm gonna see all of y'all's Instagram pictures, posts on your nails. And I have all of you as options of who to go to. Me, the customer, what would make me pick Evelyn over Heavenly, over Lexi, over any of you guys, over anybody else, any other salon? Right? Professionalism cleanliness super important and customer service okay super super important so if you're gonna sit down somewhere and they're gonna polish 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 well if Lexi does a three-stroke technique it's nice it's done it's fast it's, and I'm gonna go to her because she's better but she also has to have a cleanliness and the professionalism and the customer service right so three-stroke technique which you also do at state board Okay, so here we go. You're gonna go start in the middle and you're gonna come down. That's your first stroke. Now you can go to the right or you can go to the left first. It does not matter. Sides doesn't matter. I'm gonna do it like you read a book, it's easier. So I'm gonna go to my left, strike down. That's my second stroke. And then I'm gonna go to the right, strike down. That's my third stroke. Now, the reason why people will take their brush and polish, 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 polish is because on this first coat of color, they have so much product on that brush. The product, a nail does not absorb. It is like a table. You put product paint down, it's not gonna get absorbed down, it's just gonna spread out. If you have too much product on your brush, you're just spreading the polish over the top of the nail. It's not settling down. So you're gonna get streaks, and I'm gonna show you in a minute how that happens. So when you get when you polish and you get these vertical streak lines of chunky bits of color, then you're like, ooh, I, I need to smooth it out, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wipe. Oh, I made another one over here because I'm just picking up that product and I'm putting it somewhere else, because remember it doesn't absor absorb. So I'm gonna swipe. Oh, I made another one. And I'm just gonna swipe, 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 swipe. Okay? So, again, grandma swipes at home. Why does she need to come to the salon and pay you to swipe at the salon? Right? You need to be different, you need to be professional, and do it the correct way. Okay. So, again, three stroke technique. When you get to stay board senior year, trust me, do this technique. So, practice now. Okay? Toes. Hands, it's all the same, nail, artificial nails. The only time that you really don't do the three stroke is if, um, one, you're really good, two, you have a really good nail polish bottle um, where the brush is nice and thick and has a curved top 
that is the same shape of the uh, cuticle area where you literally just put the brush down, spread the bristles and do one stroke and you're done. If you ever get a chance to work with a nail polish called Orly, their brushes are, I love them, they're magic. Literally, their brush is curved at the tip. Remember face painting, we talked about flat, pointed and all of that. Their brush is rounded and it's rounded like the cuticle and so it's made that way to help you do your job better and faster and more professional. If you go to the dollar store and you buy this brush and it's like, right? It's gonna be hard to make that really nice line at the cuticle area and it's gonna make you work harder to make that nice line and not stain the skin. Does that make sense? Okay, so a lot of times I talk to this gentleman at the dollar store, um, you know, little men that just start talking to people, brand people in the store. He worked for this company where they make, they, they bottle products. That particular day he was bottling bleach um, and he had a bag of popcorn in his hand and he was, you know, started talking about it as a fair popcorn, whatever. And then he started telling me that, and he's been there for a long time. He says that most of the time you buy the bottle, you pay for the bottle, you don't pay for the bleach. You don't pay for the inside, the contents of the product. Think of skincare. Skincare, there could be like a little eye cream like this and it's like $60, right? It's really expensive. But the, it's a glass container and it's got a cute little butterfly on the lid and like perfumes and all that. Yeah, the product costs money, but sometimes the packaging is really what they, they hit you for, okay? So he said that he had the bag of popcorn in his hand. He was like, you know, I'm really not paying for this popcorn. You know how cheap popcorn is to make? I'm really paying for the bag. The bag is more expensive than the popcorn. It's like, oh yeah. He's like, yeah, we're doing bleach right now at the company. And you know, you guys are really just paying for the bottle. You're not paying for the, because it costs money to make a bottle that'll hold the bleach. So it doesn't. And I was like, wow, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? So FYI, um, when you're buying a nail polish, sometimes, it's worth buying the expensive ones because of the brush and the way the brush is made. The brush is what's gonna make or break your designs. Okay, we learned that when we created our really thin brush the other day, okay? All right, so let's put that to the side. Let's get our color wheel here. <clears throat> I already opened, and guys, understand, I have to demo for first and second period, so I've already drawn all over mine and then it broke, and I gave one of the students mine because it was broken, so. Bear with me on my color wheel. It's looking a little a little janky here, okay? Okay, where's my yellow? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my color wheel out of my packaging. So go ahead and do that. You can use your Sharpie. And we are going to label. Now, I want to say that this particular color wheel on this page is flipped backwards, okay? When you look at a color wheel for a color company when you're doing hair color, the red is on the right side and the blue is on the left. So just think red R, right R, right side, red is the right one on the right side. Okay, so just think that. This one's wrong, we're not gonna change, we're just gonna go with it, we're gonna copy it, okay? Just know it's, it's flipped. Yellow though is always on the top. Think of the sun is up in the sky. So yellow is always on the top. So go ahead and line it up, and you can see it says color wheel on there. Line it up however you want, doesn't matter. And what we're going to do is get one of the nails to be at 12 o'clock. Straight up, 12 o'clock. It should be right over the yellow bubble. So what you're gonna do is you're going to write the, the letter Y for yellow. over the yellow bubble. You're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. You're gonna be over the blue bubble, okay? Don't let it spin, you're over six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're over the B, uh, blue bubble, write the letter B over that nail. You're gonna count six times more and you're over the red, write the letter R for red over the red bubble. These are your primary colors. Red, yellow, and blue. I don't want to tilt them too much because they're already open. Speaking of, can you see back there one, two, the third row that kit? 
Do you see the little, these little containers of paint? You can see the back of the yellow and the front of a, you can see the lid of one of them. These spill out. Like you can close them all day long, but they spill out. Every year somebody spills out. The other day I asked you to put them in a zip baggie and to store them like this in your kit for a reason because they spill out. So hers come tomorrow. Okay. Please put them this way in your kit. I looked through your, no, I didn't open them. I just looked and a lot of y'all had them kind of crazy. So don't tilt them. Going sideways, upside down, upright, okay? I know it's a tight fit in there. You got a lot of good stuff this year. Okay, so I lost my train of thought. Um, okay, so you have, okay, red, yellow, blue. Red, yellow, blue are colors that are made by nature, okay? You cannot make red, yellow, or blue. You can't make them, okay? Yes, we can manufacture in them, but you can't mix two colors together to make these colors. White and black are not colors. White and is, a, is an abundance of white, and black is a lack of white. But by nature, you can't. There are you can't find them in nature. Okay. If I were to shut all of this down and there's no light source whatsoever, this white bottle, what color will it look? black because you can't see anything close your eyes what do you see black right you take the light away black so if this was pitch black you couldn't see me i can see everything is black right if somebody ripped the roof and shot aliens came down and sh shut down with like this bright 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 light an abundance of light everything would look white my black pants would be bright because everything is just bright right so black is a lack of light and white is an abundance of light in nature you can mix any of these three colors together to make any color in the world including mixing white and black as well black will make something more dark and muddy ish and white will make something more vibrant and light like a pastel so when you go to these hair shows nail shows um, in october um, we have a uh, field trip where I'm going to take you to the different nail supply stores and you're going to see all the different you're like oh my gosh I want all of them. these are nail polishes I want all of these colors but I can't afford them they're all thirty dollars what you need to do to, to build your kit when you're building your kit is buy five colors these three colors red yellow and blue and then buy black and white with those five colors you can make any color in the world any color Okay, you just need to know how to mix them. So, when you go to the stores and you're building your kits, those are the five colors you should have of acrylics, gels, powders, all of the things in, in, in liquid form. Something solid, it, unless it's Play Doh, you can't 3D, 4D gel. It's kind of hard to, to mix and put together. Questions on that? Okay, so we are going to start with our primary colors, then move on to our secondary colors tomorrow so let's label those now I'm at yellow I'm at blue and red remember this one red is on the wrong side red should be on the right side but we're gonna go with it so on your yellow go ahead and count one two and then the third nail should be over the dark green bubble and write a G for green that is a secondary color the secondary color happens when you mix yellow and blue together, you make green. You guys have had art, yeah, so that you should know. You should have already done this. 9.30, ADA, attendance reminder. From the green, you're gonna count one, two, on the third one, you should stop at blue. From the blue, you should count one, two, on the third one, you should stop at violet. Don't ever say purple, because they'll look at you like you're dumb. In our industry, we don't say purple. We say violet. And on a rainbow, it's not purple, it's indigo. Pretty fancy, okay? Just don't say that, trust me, I'm speaking from experience. So violet is over that dark, darker violet color. You're gonna count one, mine's missing two. On the third one, you're at red. Count one, two on the third one, you're right over the orange, so right over orange. One, two, and you're back at yellow. 
है Okay. I'm going to take my napkin, put that over the top, my little things in the sheet protect so I don't get it dirty. I've got yellow, green, blue, violet, red, and orange. Let's get started with our yellow. Remember that when you are working with these, you tap, 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 tap on the top, hold it on the bottom, swirl it open carefully, and open your lid. You're going to take your damping dish, you're going to take your pipette labeled alcohol, you're going to take your alcohol bottle, you're going to get some alcohol and pour it out in your pipette, close your bottle so it does not evaporate. Take your brush, you're going to dip it into your alcohol. Let it soak a little bit, tap it up on your napkin, your brush is ready to go. Mine's got a little bit of blue from last class, that's okay. Remember if you're right handed, your supplies are on your right hand side, if you're left handed, your supplies are on the left hand side. Alright, so what you're going to do is you're going to dip into the yellow. Yesterday you learned how to crimp this brush and you crimped it. You have a top and a bottom side to the brush. Dip your brush in, let it soak up the paint. Wipe one side on the inside corner, inside corner of your container. Now, if you didn't use your yellow yesterday and you had to open it and mix it, make sure to mix it well using the back end of the brush. Circle, rotate, and then fold over to mix the ingredients of your paint. I can't remember what color we used yesterday. Yellow? Oh, red, gotcha. So then you need to prep your, prep your paint first time you use it. Always mix it. Wipe the back of your brush once you're ready. Then you've mixed it. Remember to start, keep working on the inside corner of your paint. Now look at mine. I kept it upright. I wiped it and look, it's still seeped out. I'm telling you, these paints seep out. Okay, so keep your paints upright. All right, so when you're ready, you're gonna wipe the one side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it wrong so I can show you. I'm gonna wipe one side. I have way too much paint on one side of my brush. On my back side, I don't have any. And on my top side, I do. All right, so we're gonna take our palette and we're gonna hold it like we're holding the client's finger. The nail tip is pointing to our belly. My pinky is gonna rest on the table. It's gonna kiss the table for stability, okay? I'm gonna come to the middle. I'm gonna go push down. I'm gonna spread my wings. I'm gonna wipe down. I can already see I've got two chunks of, of uh, color on the right and the left because I use way too much. I know it's hard to see on the screen. Let's see if there with the shadow. Then I'm gonna go to the left. I'm gonna push down, open, swipe down. I again have too much product. I now move my line is now here, my chunky line of product. I'm gonna go to the right, I'm gonna push down and swipe. Too much product, I now move my line to the middle right here. I can keep, I can keep doing that, but I'm just spreading my line until it dries and until I can smooth it all out. But there's still lines on there. So grandma does that. Grandma does swipe, 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 swipe. Your first time, you're going to mess it up. That's just how it is, right? Babies don't just get up and start running and jumping, right? They first roll around, they crawl, they fall down, and they get up and do it again, then they're running. I don't think we would have babies if that was that case, okay? All right. So that's your first layer, okay? Your second layer, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit to give it a second to dry. Your second layer is going to be a little bit darker. Now remember your first coat of color is just a deposit of color. Just a slight deposit of color. You should still be able to see through it. You should still be able to see the natural nail. Okay. Let that dry for a little bit. When you do the pinky, by the time you get to the other pinky, the first pinky is ready. So let's go ahead and go back. We're going to dip in. 
We're going to wipe one side. If I have too much product on my brush, I'm just going to wipe some of that off. I'm going to come in down the middle. I'm going to wipe the middle. Come into the right or the left. I'm going to wipe. Come into the right or left. I'm going to wipe. Okay. Now I think it's hard to see, but you can kind of see this chunk here in the middle. I had a lot of product. I wiped the left and I created a line. I wiped the right and I created a line. You will always create a line in the middle when you're done if you have too much product in your brush. Okay. At that point, you just do one small swoop in the middle and you should be able to cover that all there to remove that. But you always want down the middle, to the right, to the left or to the left, to the right, whichever one, whatever order you want. You should still be able to see the Y through because this is acrylic paint, it's not, you know, a, a concentrated pigment and it's yellow, so you should still see your Y. You're gonna go ahead and take your napkin, you're gonna fold your, your napkin with your brush inside and pull your brush out before dipping it into your alcohol. You're going to push the heel of the brush down into your damping dish, allowing that product to be cleaned by your alcohol. And remember that acrylic paints is something art, acrylic art paints is something you can use for nail art. You're going to wipe on the inside corner of that, bra that damping dish and fold one more time to wipe. And you're ready to begin on your next color. So we can move on to our blue. Now remember, before you close your product, you need to wipe. So you need to take your paper towel and clean the rim of your product. How much paint came off? And then seal your container so that it doesn't dry out, so that it doesn't get contaminated. You can then go ahead and um, move on to your blue and your red. Try and finish your blue and the red before you leave class today. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, that is all I have for you for today. Go ahead and finish. Finish your red and blue, and then you can pick up.